In this video, I'm going to quickly go over a uh, common question I've gotten uh, after the release of version 11 of the Hot Air app. Uh, that question pertains to the KMZ file support. So a lot of balloon festivals or competitions distribute KMZ files that have embedded imagery in them. And Hot Air, it, the app does not support that imagery itself, so it can load uh, shape inside there if there are them but not the imagery uh, but I'll quickly show you how to convert those uh, files into a format that Hot Air can work with. Alright so the first thing to do is uh, open up Google Earth and it works pretty much the same in a Mac and our PC. So you just go to file open and then you find the KMZ file so in this case it's uh, bc2018.kmz so I'm going to open that. And then it'll zoom in automatically for you. And so you can see quickly that this has a lot of the PZ uh, or the zones. So they're red and yellow. And then if you change the kind of the zoom angle here, I can get it to uh, look over overhead. Makes it easier to trace. All right, so the first thing you want to do is first um, right click on my places and say add a folder. And so we'll just call this BC 2018. Let's okay. And then just make sure this folder is highlighted so all of the things we're going to add are now going to be added to that folder. And that makes it easier to export at the very end. All right, so let's zoom in here a little bit and pick out a couple of these to trace. So I'll just zoom in. This one's a little bit complicated, so I'll use that one as a good example. All right, so you can see that a lot of these have uh, labels. This one is 58, number 58 in crops, and this one is number 57 in livestock and has the stay above 500 feet marking. And all these things you'll note are in the image itself, in the imagery, and they're not shapes. So the goal of this is to convert these to shapes that can be rendered in the Hot Air app. All right, so the first tool is to use is the, called the Polygon tool, and it's right here. So if you click on this, it pops up an image for a new polygon. And uh, if you just drag like that, it just creates polygons. And so we don't really want that one. So I'll hit cancel. And there we go, making a new polygon. So now every time you click, it's gonna add a vertex to the polygon. So first, I'm gonna go click in this corner. And then I'll just click all the way around. This is the region and all the corners. Okay, all the way around. And then I usually give it a name. So it's 58. And then the style and color. Uh, so I already had this set up before, but I usually use um, yellow, the actual named color for the yellow. Uh, you can pick any color you really want. And then I usually do a line width of three. That shows up pretty good on the mobile devices. And the opacity of 100%. And for the area, I have a filled outline color of, again, the same color as yellow, but I set the opacity to 33 so you can kind of see the map behind it when it's rendered um, in hot air. And then hit OK. And then it's sort of, it. Uh, the Google Earth keeps those same settings, and so I like to do all the same color first. So if you just trace all the yellow ones, that works best. So you can just go to Polygon and then just trace another one. I'm just going to kind of follow this around here a little bit. And if you uh, see a spot that you sort of missed, you can just grab that corner and move it around. All right, we'll just name this one 56. Say OK. All right, let's, now let's trace this red one here. Let's say new polygon. Trace the corners. 
Okay, so this one we want red. So we're going to change the style and the color. The lines are going to go red. And the area, click on that, choose red. And we want the opacity to be 33. Say OK. Oh, I'll just name this 57. OK, yep, and so we can kind of do the same thing again to another red one. And once you get going at this, you get pretty good at it. And it doesn't take very long to do a whole map. And then once you do it, you can actually just share it with other people. So not everybody has to do this. 51, say OK. OK, so now we also want to do an additional thing. Uh, so now these, these zones will show up in hot air, all these uh, shape zones, but they won't have the labels. So to add the labels, you need to add a place mark to each one. And so um, it usually works best to gonna get the area you want in the center, and then you hit this place mark icon, and it adds it to the center of the page. And then afterwards, you can drag it to where you want it to be. And so you take this place mark, and you give it a new name. So I usually give it the name that it's titled on the map. So that's 58, and call it crops. If there's any other notes, you can uh, add them down here to the description. And so when you click on that uh, waypoint, or not a waypoint, but that place mark in hot air, it'll pop up and show you those notes. So you can add the notes here. Uh, there's no extra notes here, so I'll just say OK. And it doesn't really matter what pin it is, pin color is going to be, because hot air only renders purple pins. So you don't have to worry about doing that. All right, so add another one here. And I usually just like to stick them somewhere in the center. We'll call this one. 57 livestock and then this one does have a note of 500 feet so I'll just add that to this here and you can really add whatever you want to these notes say okay so I'll quickly do the rest of these just as an example and then 500 feet And we'll do this last one here. All right. Okay, so once that's done, we just did these four here. You'll see they are all included in this one folder, which you can turn on and off. And you can turn off the imagery here, and you can see them. They, this would be kind of how it looks when it's rendered in hot air, so you can kind of get a preview of that. Looks pretty good. So next what we want to do is just highlight this folder, the BC2018 or whatever your folder is named, and then go to File, Save, and then say Save Place As. And so it gives it the automatic name of uh, the name of your folder. So that's BC2018 in this case. And I'm just going to put an underscore demo. And then you can choose from the formats. Either one will work now in the hot air. So you can do KMZ. And that's really just a compressed version of the KML. Uh, so it just makes the files smaller. And so that it works in this case. So hit KMZ and then hit save. All right, and uh, once you're to this point, take that file that we just saved out and uh, either email it to yourself or um, put it in Dropbox or any place that you have access to, to to open it on your phone or iPad. And then I'll show you how that works on that side. Okay, now I have uh, sent the file to myself and this is what it looks like on the phone. Uh, the first thing you'll notice is the size of the file. So it's only 2.3 kilobytes. And uh, if I traced all of the shapes on the entire map, it might be maybe 40 kilobytes. And uh, that's much smaller. The original file uh, with all the imagery was about 46 megabytes. So this is orders of magnitude smaller. And uh, so this 
This format is much more efficient and we don't need the imagery anyways because the Hot Air app itself already has the satellite imagery or the hybrid imagery. Um, so this just works overall much better. Okay, so this is the file and this is what it looks like if you email yourself. So if you just tap on the file itself, so I'm just tapping on on that and it'll open up and say, okay, this is a Google Earth KMZ document. And now if you tap up in the corner uh, where this icon is in the upper uh, right hand corner, tap on there and it opens up this um, share sheet. And so what I do is I scroll over to find the hot air app and say copy to hot air. So I just tap on the hot air icon and that opens up and it says, okay, the KMZ import was success. The map overlay was successfully and just hit OK. And then you can scroll or go back to the the uh, custom overlay options. So I'm going to turn off all these other ones and then find the one we just added was this BC 2018 demo. I'm going to select that one. All right. So then I go back. And if I just go to uh, the real time flight tracking mode, I'll just hit OK here. And uh, It'll probably try to zoom me into where I am located now, but I'm going to try to force it over here. And you can see, oh, there it goes. So, all right, back to where the overlays are. Okay, here are the overlays. So you can see overlays, and if you tap on these little waypoints, it tells you the, the, label so that one's 58 crops this one is 57 livestock with the 500 feet note and so these will appear when you're zoomed in like this and then they also make it really easy to add waypoints too so if you wanted to mark maybe a target on here i can just tap by one of these and then quickly just add the waypoint and then i'll get a waypoint drawn to one of those locations but so there you have it. That's how you can get uh, maps like this imported into hot air. So hope that helps.